All right, in this video, I'm gonna explain how I did all of these Audi e-tron images and animations covering the 3D behind it and the post-production techniques. This won't be a step-by-step, -step, but it will be a brief breakdown on how I achieved everything. So before I start, I just wanna say a massive thank you for a thousand subs. I didn't think I'd reach that so quickly, so a big thank you. Uh, it's definitely motivated me to make more content and share everything I know on here. So if you're not subbed already, uh, I recommend it as there's going to be a lot more videos and information being shared. Anyway, let's get into the video. All right. So the first thing with any project is finding what you want to achieve, getting references, finding the look, finding some inspiration. And uh, I was heavily inspired by the black sand beaches in Iceland, which is famous for this plane which is sort of the south of Iceland and I really liked sort of the black um, sand with the rocks and then you get sort of the like these alien like structures um, on the beaches as well and then on top of that I thought maybe a cloudy sky and then mixing that in with sort of a, a twilight sort of look and then for the car it was sort of a neon sort of futuristic kind of lighting that I wanted to achieve it took a lot of playing to get sort of the look I want but this is sort of the main inspiration uh, for the shot. So jumping into Blender the first thing that I did on this was bringing the car into a separate file so that I can just texture it nice and clean and then maybe asset this in the future. Now this is a Audi e-tron GTRS I believe and this is from HKV Studios. Um, again I, I didn't buy this model they provided it for this shot and you can see it on the front page of their website. Really nice guys and they do amazing models, like even under the hoods and the boot. Really detailed, I think even this charging port. Like these cars have everything. So I textured this with my car paint shader. Um, if you haven't seen my car paint shader, I actually did a YouTube video on it. Um, explaining how I did everything apart from these scratches. I'm gonna save that for a different video. So I textured it um, using that. I textured the inside, which is quite a nice interior. Um, I did actually remake this entire display and that display within the file, um, just not yet, because it was uh, showing, I think it's German, um, and it was showing a location that wasn't in Iceland, so I had to change that. And then I also changed the registration plate to show an Icelandic registration plate. And I think a lot of people, when they're doing sort of automotive renders, they don't think about registration plates. You just leave it as this. But I like to think of it as if I was photographing this car, it would need a registration plate to be on location. I think even if it was being shipped off a like a lorry and it was driving on sort of public paths or public places, it would still need a registration plate by law. I may be wrong, but I think it adds quite an, a nice little bit of realism. So why not do it? As well as that, I did these tires. So I really like having high geometry tires. I don't like it being in a normal map. So I've got these really detailed tires. I didn't make these myself. These are from Turbo Squid. I think they're about 40 pounds, I believe. But really good, but they are quite heavy. So that's pretty much the car. It was quite simple, honestly. Um, I, I tried to keep it clean and then when I got it into a set then I'll start texture painting stuff that I wanted but this was sort of like the basic shader that I can then instance into the scene and then link it to the file if I wanted to change things on it but that's the Audi e-tron all right so this is the scene file so if I just show you what this looks like I'll hide the car and just go into the material view so you can understand sort of what I was going for. Let's just turn the lights off as well, just so it's not distracting. So I went for this black sand, um, which you can see here, and it looks, it doesn't look as rocky as the reference, but I did a geo scatter on that. So I'll show you that. So I'm just gonna basically go layer by layer and show you how I did everything. This sand is just a mix of two materials which is being mixed by a noise texture. So essentially you get one material set it up in the node group and then you get another one which you want and then you do a mix shader and then control it by a black and white mask and then you get two materials. 
So this is really helpful if you're doing really large surfaces and then you can mix between them so you're not getting tiling in your textures. And I think it just breaks up the textures quite a bit. And then on top of this material, I did a geo scatter. So if I go here and then I'll select this base and turn these rocks on. So I've turned all my geo scatters on and you can see all these rocks which have been scattered and they've also been scattered like sort of big as they go up to the big pieces of rock. So it's basically like a gradient and I just hand did that. So I did one layer which had tiny rocks and then I did another layer manual paint which did bigger rocks and then another manual paint which did bigger rocks and it also did these bushes and these sticks and I'll try going rendered view but this may crash. So now on top of my sand material you can see all these little rocks which I've got scattered and it's optimized by the camera right now so it actually stops sort of in a line there. Let's go in solid view. Yeah so you can actually see it's only being viewed on the camera which is quite nice but it adds so much more detail into this texture and inst I tried using a displacement texture but it wasn't looking right and like this is a 4090 and it was still struggling with a displacement texture so I just thought let's just do uh, loads of scatters of loads of rocks and it rendered quite quickly honestly it's quite a good way to do everything and then you can even just display them as single points if the scene does get a bit heavy or you can just turn it off to the viewport which I did quite a bit. So now the scene's running really quickly, but if you rendered it, it would still be there. Another thing that I did for this uh, surface was adding a sort of tire mark where the car would be driving through and then making a mark on the tire. You can't even really see it in the final shot, which is kind of a shame, but um, it is there. And this is just using a dynamic paint canvas which you need quite a bit of geometry. So I've got this a much, and then I did a subdivision quite a lot. And you can actually also see that I've done a displacement texture on the sand as well, just to give it a little bit of bumpiness, just to add that realism. Cause no sand is ever going to be completely flat, really. Um, especially not this sand. So I just did a little displacement and then I did a subdivision and the dynamic paint is down here. And then that's being powered by these blocks. So I basically traced around the tire and then put them into the, the sand. And then that's just constantly painting into the sand. And I can actually move this. And then if I do an animation again, it will stop painting. So it's quite a handy way of getting some tire grooves. Um, you could actually attach a block to the tire. And then as the car's moving, it would actually change um, as the car's going. But as this was just a still, I didn't really need to do that. So that's the, the sand base. Honestly, quite simple. It was just getting sort of the look right with that uh, pure reference that I had before. Now, on top of the sand, I had these sort of crazy like alien structures, as you can see here. And they are scatters as well. So these are from Mega Scans. The main aim was this, was to get them all looking the same saturation and the same uh, level of brightness. You can see this one isn't, I'm not sure why, but that's fine. So with these, I just scattered them everywhere, um, multiple, and then I started instance and collections of them. So I'd basically like get all these, put them into a collection and then instance that collection. And that just means Blender can handle way more polygons. Um, it doesn't crash as often. It doesn't really affect render time, but it will just render. It will allow Blender to render, which uh, is always good. So I scattered loads of these around. I changed the scale of them. Couldn't really change like the actual mesh of them because that would require it not to be an instance. Um, but these just really nice to manipulate and get the look that you're going for. So my main aim was getting this sort of opening and then getting the car driving through, which is pretty cool. Now, as well as this, I scattered some in the background as well. And then I scaled these up. So then you can actually see a little bit of the sort of rocky formation, but because of the fog, it didn't really show it, but it was still there, which it added texture into the, into the background. So it still worked. And you probably just noticed this. So this is like the same material as this one, but um, just to save on a bit of VRAM, it's not as high resolution and the scale isn't as high. 
but you still get sort of that color and texture information. And this is all going to be sort of out of focus, so it didn't really matter. I just wanted to get the sort of texture and color across that I got in this main uh, surface. And then I found this sort of ring of mountains. Um, I'm not really sure where I got it from. I just searched like mountain asset comes with like a few different textures. Um, you can see I've got a desert one here, but it came with loads of different ones. I just ended up making it black um, and it, it just added to the background. So it, it looks like I actually have mountains. And if I go back to the, the pure ref, you can sort of see the mountains in the background. And I just think that helped um, sort of get the sense of this scene into Blender, which worked quite nice. Now, on top of that, the lighting and fog really sold this scene. So if I go into render view here, you'll see I've got my uh, lighting. So this is using a Magground HDRI. So if I just preview this, you can see here that it's actually just a black and white uh, HDRI. And it is actually from Iceland, so that's quite handy. But I didn't like the lighting, and obviously I was going for a twilight sort of look. You can actually see the HDRI here. Um, I was going for a twilight sort of look. So what I did was just mix it with a color node, and that gave me this, and then I plugged that into the background. So I got that twilight sort of look without having a twilight HDRI. And instead of using um, a sort of backplate, I know a lot of people just uh, import an image as plain on a background, but I wanted multiple different angles um, of cameras, and I wanted it all to be sort of the same sky, but different. So I actually used a 10K HDRI, which it was quite heavy on the scene, but if you zoom in, like the quality is still really good and it was going to get depth of field anyway. So yeah, that's just like a little trick I did for lighting. So obviously this is all real, real lighting now because it's been lit by HDRI. And then you'll notice this doesn't really look like uh, the set in my actual image. And that's due to the fog. Now, if I just turn the fog on, you'll see it dramatically <laughs> changes. And this is only done by two layers. So if I go into this fog layer, it's it's not that dense, but it is quite dense. And it has a low anastropy. So this basically controls how much light can pass through. So if I go into render view and I start changing this, you'll start getting a different effect. It might be hard to tell, but that changes how much light can actually pass through the set. I also did an emission color just to add a little bit of color into sort of the shadows of everything. And that was that honestly quite simple. I didn't plug any sort of noise texture into the color. Um, I did on the fog round. So if I look at that, you can see here, if I unplug the volume and just isolate that object, I've got a little bit of a noise texture, which basically separates um, where the fog is. So the white would be where it is foggy and the black would be where it isn't foggy. And then I plug that into the density. Um, and then I also made sure to cancel the actual noise texture out by this gradients, which means that the noise texture doesn't appear at the top. And that just means that the fog only really appears from the floor and then goes upwards. And then with them combined, you get sort of this dark, mysterious sort of lighting. Now, if I add the car back in, you can see how the car is reflecting the actual HDRI. A lot of images I see, you see a car which isn't reflecting the, the background because people are using image planes. Um, but with this, the actual HDRI, the actual background of the shot is reflecting on the car and giving the correct color, which I think just makes it so seamless into the background. These uh, bright lights aren't the ones in the final shot. Um, I think I mustn't have saved the file with the, the right gradients on, but I did change these because they're quite flat and I wanted a little bit of more gradient going on. But if I turn the lighting on now, we can see sort of how much the shot comes to life. And for some reason, I must have deleted the emission lights that come out the reg because I did do them. You can see them here and they really help sell that registration plate. And that's the Icelandic registration plate. So I looked at loads of references and found that they have the Iceland flag with the IS. And then they also have 
sort of a code in the top right and then something in the middle. So I made sort of a realistic license plate. And then for lighting, if I just, just turn this fog off and go into the lighting, it's essentially a load of area lights. So this is my main light and this isn't very technical, but it's essentially a long area light, which is really sharp. So it reflects into the car paint. And I did it just so it sort of highlighted this area. Um, because I think this is sort of where a groove in the door is. So I wanted to highlight that area, but it also fed in from the back and then led your eye all the way into this middle part of the car and then sort of fired you out into this way. So I used the lighting to sort of direct your eye through the shot from the back where these brake lights are. And then your eye goes over this wheel into the central part of the image. And then I used some spotlights, which are for the headlights, but I actually turned these off in the final shot because I didn't like the way they looked. As well as the HDRI, I used the sun lamp um, coming from the direction of the HDRI. And this was just to add some highlights into the back of the car and sort of get some glows. So if I turn the fog off, you can see how much sort of specular highlights we're getting in the back of the car. And I just thought this added so much to the shot. And then with blooms and glares, it really brought your eye to the center of the image. So bright light into sort of this part of the wheel and this bright spot and then this red light brings you out into the front of the shot so that's pretty much it for the back shot now obviously you can't see my rocks which i scattered but they come in the final render now on top of all this i did loads of different cameras that i wanted to achieve um, but this time i was quite good and I added them in separate files so all of these cameras are in their own file so that i can change things on the fly well, I can just go through each one of these. So I was playing around with an above um, shot. Now, obviously, the lighting doesn't really make sense for an above shot because you're getting this weird light. But this is just to show you how I sort of come up with cameras. I really like this idea, but I couldn't get the, the red light incorporated into the shot to make sense. It doesn't really make sense here, but you can't see where the red light source is. So your your brain can sort of, it just comes up with an idea. Why is there a red light there? Well, for a shot like this, you'd need some context. And I was really struggling get like coming up with an idea to get context. So I actually skipped this shot, unfortunately. But with the motion blur, it looked really good. Um, we've got a bright light shot, which I didn't do. I did do that shot. I did a version of this, but not that one. Um, close-ups, a front shot, which I really liked. Front landscape wide. I did. I played around with some portrait shots as well, but um, in the end, I just sort of left it with landscapes. This is the interior, which I did a separate shot of. This was going to be a portrait as well. Not with the rocks in the way, probably a different part of the shot. This would have been a portrait. And then this shot, I did end up doing just a bit different. And obviously the line is different. Now, on top of all that, I did do an animation as well. So I'm just going to open up the animation file. All right. So this is the animation file. So you can see I've got my rocks turned off, my geo scatter, my outside lights and anything else that I had going. So the only thing that's visible in the shot is the interior. And I left the world light on in the background as well. But the main idea for this animation, wait, I'll just show you. So this is what the, let me turn the set off, uh, the fog off. So this is what the animation file looks like. So it's basically the same, but I have got a big area light sort of lighting up the whole car, just so I had a bit more film, which you can see here. And you can see the, the interface that I just completely remade in Photoshop. Um, so it was English and so it showed that it was parked and it didn't show the location. And you can see here all the texturing that I did. So these nice grooves, sort of plastic material on the, the wheel and the seats. And honestly, this rendered quite quick. I think each frame was two minutes at 4K and that was like pure 4K. So 4,000 by... 2666. Um, but yeah, the main idea on this was to get 
um, this sort of light beam coming across the car. So if I play the animation, you can see the light sort of coming across the car and then lighting it up like so. Uh, let's just go to zero so you can see it fully like so. And I did this kind of weirdly. So I tried a different, like a few different methods. Um, but what I came up with was I made this in Photoshop and then I animated color ramps, which I don't know if that's the proper way you should do it, but essentially I made a gradient like this and then I plugged that into um, the factor which would light it. So I plugged it into the emission and then animated it so that the pure white would go across. We might be able to see it. Yeah, so I animated it so that the pure white would come across and then I added another one which basically feathered it off. So if you think of it, this animation is controlling the strength. Oh, and also the alpha. So this isn't visible, but everything from here is visible. And then from here, I'm multiplying a gradient on top so that what is visible is then get feathered by this other gradient. So to put it simply, this white gradient is moving across. And then this gradient is also moving across and multiplying it so that the black part isn't visible. And then in the end, you get a see-through um, light, which is wrapping around the car. And this was greatly inspired by Oscar Baki. He's a, a photographer and he did something really similar to this. Um, and I just sort of wanted to replicate it as best I could. So yeah, that's pretty much how I did the lights on the animation. Um, I'll show you the retouching of the shots as well. So before we jump into Photoshop, um, I'll show you all the tests that I did um, before I got to the place I am, because it seemed like a lot of people liked sort of my breakdowns on each render and how everything got better. So I first started off with this. So this is a render without the, the blue sky and the fog and all that stuff and even the mountains, but you can see sort of how the car textures are looking so far and all the rocks that is scattered. You can even see that a lot of them are floating, but because the shot's so dark, you can't really tell. Um, but this was sort of before I, I knew what I was going to do with the lighting. Um, so I was playing around. I think this was quite late at night. And then I came back in the morning and was like, sort of knew what I wanted to do. So I played around with this HDRI, um, which I thought was just too, too concentrated. It, it took your eye over there way too quickly and the focus wasn't on the car. So then I found this one from my ground, which is the Iceland one, which I was like, that's really nice, nice and subtle. But then I didn't like how dark this was. So I played around with the fog levels. Here you can see crazy fog. Um, Played around with how the motion blur was going to look um, and then I got started on my first um, sort of camera angle that I was going to do. Playing around with the motion blur, I did the rocks and then the rocks again and then also the lighting here and then the motion blur and you'll notice in the retouch that I did a motion blur and then an unmotion blur and then merged them on top and then did another motion blur it's um, which you'll see in the Photoshop but that's basically where I got to with the final render and then it turned into what it is now. All right, so now we're in Photoshop and you can see I've got my image here and this is a, a 10,000 uh, pixel render. Um, so if I zoom in, there's loads of detail um, all over the place. You can see all the dirt that I've added and Oh, they're the lights that I also added. Um, so I'm just going to get started and show you what I did. So this is the main render. So from there, I started denoising it in Blender. But I also tried uh, AI denoise from Topaz. I was just getting loads of noise in the fog. So I wanted to try clean that up as much as possible and then add in my own grain. And then I did a lighting. So the reason for this is... It's just a bit too overlit 
from the render. So I didn't like how much this was spilling out. I didn't like how much red like this bottom bit was getting, um, stuff like that. So I just turned them all down and balanced the car out again for like this interior. It was just way too distracting. So I did a whole new render um, with a lighting pass turned off just so I can blend it in myself. And then I did, so this is a motion blur. Um, and then I rendered out a non motion blurred version, which you can see like this. I only did a region and then I blurred it with a lens blur in Photoshop and then added that on, on top. This might take a while now. So I had added a motion blur and then I just blended that in using this Kuiper mask. And that got me my little rocks, which you couldn't really see in the main blur motion blur. So then I added in just a little bit more motion blur um, in post so I could get my little rocks back. And that was just to add texture and detail to the surface, essentially. From there, I did my car cleanup. So I didn't like sort of this weird artifact that was going on. And then there was also a weird sort of line going across my brake light. And a car lighting. Now my car lighting is always just to ping stuff, add contrast, make things separate from the background. Um, so I was brightening up, brightening up the reg, separating that back part of the car and making these brake lights a bit more hot. The set cleanup wasn't that much. I think this part was just a bit too distracting and I thought it looked a bit too soft. So I essentially added in a dirt overlay which I think we'll be able to see, yeah. So that's a dirt overlay which have matched perspective and then motion blurred on top. And then I masked it off ever so slightly just so I had a little bit more texture in the floor. But that's without it, that's with it. Which I did quite a lot. Now the set lighting was quite a big one because in my head I, I liked the idea of having this red glow behind the car. But then in post, I, I was sort of like, it doesn't really work. And it makes the car blend into the background. So I essentially, instead of rendering it, because I think these 10K renders took about two hours. Um, and they kept crashing when they tried to need noise. So I just painted it out. Um, so I'll go through my layers here. So I was adding quite a lot of contrast. Again, getting that sort of stranger things look even though i i wasn't thinking of stranger things at the time but a lot of people said it reminded it of them um so here you can see i've got i've masked out the car and then i'm using a color blend mode of blue and i'm just bringing the blues back into the sky and you can see the difference without it the car sort of blends into the background and it looks quite dirty now i know it i'm trying to get a dirty shot but um Painting the blue in just it it made the car stand out so much more. I thought um, from there, just a little bit of tweaks. It got a bit too blue over here, so I brought it back with a little bit of purple, and that's the set. So if I turn that on and off, you can see how much of a big difference it brings. The black point down of the clouds. Just overall, it makes the shot sit a lot nicer. From there, I added some dirt layers, which. Um, I like my control in Photoshop adding dirt, so I added some sort of tire spill, um, a little bit more dirt marks, dirt on the side as well. There we go. And then I do a color grade. Um, and this is just contrast, a vignette, and then getting the, the hue where I want it. So contrast, bring in the floor. It was looking a bit too pink um, from the the bright lights so I brought them back to red and then overall I just did the blue so it was a bit more turquoise and then I did a vignette to bring your eye into the center of the image and then from there <laughs> I did a big sort of smoke layer and this is a mess this uh folder um so I, I probably can't go through all of that well you see the difference I basically try to wrap it around the tire and then have it sort of spit out so you can see all these dirt marks which are flying from the tire and then you're getting this dust and i tried to follow 
the gap that I made in the sand. Um, obviously, stuff like this doesn't really make sense. Clearly, I didn't catch that. Um, but these smoke layers really help sell the car. Again, all this dirt kick up from the car. Really adds to the shot. And it makes sense because it's going through a sandy beach. Um, so I really wanted a lot of kick up. On top of that, I did some smoke layers. Uh, see here, all on the side and in the back. And that adds just a little bit of like atmospheric haze almost. Um, which I always do. Um, shout out to, I think, 85mm on Instagram. He he did these uh, smoke brushes years ago. I think I, I can show you actually. Yeah. Um, he did these smoke layers ages ago. Probably... I want to say like five years ago and this was before i was even doing like automotive stuff um and i downloaded them and i've had them ever since and now i've only just got around to using them but they um on a low opacity and you changed like the size and angle jitter it really works just to paint and smoke so i recommend checking that out i don't think he posts on youtube anymore but um he does some good content so glares next so i always try to add a little bit of atmospheric haze in the glares so you can see without it and with it, you just get a little bit more sort of haziness from the lights. And then from there, I do a final tweak. So this is always like a camera raw filter, high pass filter. But before this, actually, I actually did a, a motion blur. So the way that I do my motion blur, and I actually got a lot of comments from this in the in my last how I did this was how I did the motion blur. So the camera is attached to the car. So when the car moves, the car will be in focus, but everything else will be motion blurred. Now, the problem with that is that means that your car is perfectly sharp. And if you're thinking about doing this in real life, you'd probably get another car and you'll be driving. And unless you're driving at the absolute perfect um, speed as the other car, it just it wouldn't be perfectly sharp. So what I did was I did a motion blur with like, so it didn't affect the center of it. So you can see here. And then I just vignetted it out with a mask like so. And then what that gave me was that my edges were just slightly blurry like so. And then what I was, that basically tries to mimic that maybe I wasn't going at the perfect speed. Um, and I think it really sells sort of the motion blur a little bit better. Now from there, I did two high pass filters and these basically sharpen um, your image. So if I zoom in, it basically adds micro contrast into your image to uh, add sharpness. And then I did a camera raw filter, which is always good. I really like the grain that you can get from the camera raw filter, like so. And again, just the contrast um, that you can add in camera raw is really useful. So if you're not doing it already, I highly recommend doing it. And then a hue saturation layer um, was just to bring the blues and the reds to the point that I wanted. And then I merged it all. But then after doing the other shots, I realized like there was some parts that I could change. So I realized that this was too blue, not sitting right. So I basically brought it all so it was sitting in the right sort of area um, and made it uh, purple and so it all sat right. And that's the, the final shot that we get. So if I go from before to after, it's quite a big difference. And this was basically the, the workflow for every shot. With the animation, the only thing I did was color grade it in DaVinci and add a few glows. Um, so it was quite simple actually. Well, that's been the, the Audi e-tron breakdown. Hopefully you learned something. I know it's not a step-by-step -step, and in the future I might do a step-by-step. -step, um, but for now, I'll just do little breakdowns. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you did. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions. Uh, I pretty much answer every single comment. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.